Hey everybody, uh, another question to answer this month. Uh, if you haven't submitted a question, go to yoganatomy.com forward slash my question and submit it there and I'll get to it eventually. Um, this month's question comes from Dunia. My question concerns nerve entrapment. <clears throat> Since a few months I have been experiencing discomfort on the ring and small finger of my left hand after conducting some research on the internet. Doctors hate you for that. I'm sure they do. Uh, I seem to understand that the pain, tingling, and loss of grip may be caused by an entrapment of the ulnar nerve at the neck, elbow, or wrist. Um, that is, when I started focusing more on my hands during my practice to notice that I was indeed slightly tilting my hand in postures such as up dog and down dog, that is, shifting most of the weight onto the fourth and fifth finger, and the external edge of the hand in general. Uh, however, I don't seem to be able to identify where the entrapment takes place, neck, elbow, or wrist. Instinctively, I feel like ruling out the elbow as there isn't much pressure on it in the primary series. Maybe I'm wrong though. Uh, yet both the wrist and the neck seem to be viable possibilities. Um, wow, a lot going on in here to talk about actually. <clears throat> um, well, let me start with uh, nerve entrapment seems like a good educated guess. It's certainly a possibility, but it's also not the only possibility. Um, there's, there's a bunch of assumptions in here. Um, that one, for instance, that it is entrapment. Uh, another alternative is that um, it's a trigger point or trigger points that are referring into your hand. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sitting in front of you and we're not doing the assessment together, but just keep that in mind. There are other things that could create that tingling and numbness, even circulation, although I wouldn't suspect it with what you're saying here. Um, there's also an assumption that it has to do with the way in which you're putting your hand on the mat and that it's tilting over. That might have something to do with it. It might not have something to do with it. That might be expressing some other thing that's going on in your shoulder that... Um, that is related to all of this, but the hand itself might not be the cause. It might be a, um, an effect of what's going on. Um, I, think, I think you're right. You're suspecting three most obvious places, neck, elbow, or wrist. However, I don't think you should throw out the elbow too quickly. Um, no, you don't put a lot of pressure on it doing the type of practice you're doing. However, um, the assumption here is that it's happening in your practice, but it might be happening outside of your practice. Maybe there's other things that you do with your left hand, maybe uh, typing, and maybe not you specifically, but generally you have to keep in mind that if we work on the computer a lot or we start doing different activities that cause us to grab things, that could add to tension. Uh, but let's go through each area by itself, and I might give you a couple of different uh, things to look out for. One is, um, let's start with the neck. Um, if, if, you, if you suspect it might be in the neck, Something you might want to look for is maybe your head is tilted off to that side. Uh, you said your left hand, so it would be that direction. Notice if your head's tilted in that direction, then you're looking for muscles called the scalenes. They could be tight. They can compress the nerves there. After that point, the nerves go down under the clavicle and are, um, live underneath a muscle called pectoralis minor, which most people don't know too much about. But go take a look at pectoralis minor um, if it's compressing the nerves, which it could be doing, um, then that's kind of where you want to treat. So now you're out of the neck, you're into a little bit more like the shoulder. Um, and keep in mind that both of these, you know, there could be something going on in the vertebrae and the discs in your neck causing all of this to happen as well. So keep it as a possibility. I'm not telling you what's going on for you because I don't know. But that's another possibility. As I said, the elbow... Look for activities outside of practice, maybe, that are causing you to grasp things tightly. Um, if the muscles in the forearm here, the flexors, they could be compressing the nerve. Um, and then by the time you get down to the wrist, um, it's possible that they're getting trapped somewhere in the carpal tunnel. Um, carpal tunnel syndrome is traditionally on the other side, the other fingers completely. So. It's not necessarily carpal tunnel syndrome, but they, they could be getting caught up in there. It's, it's, it's possible. Um, but I would say, you know, explore a few different things in your practice. Uh, sometimes what I do with people as an experiment, 
even though it's not traditionally how you should put your hands, or I'm not suggesting everybody should do this with their hands, but try taking your hand and turning it out a little bit more. And see, that's going to come from the shoulder a bit. Open the shoulder, see if that maybe changes how flat your hand is, and then see if that makes a difference on the tingling and numbness. And, um, you know, the other possibility here is you've, you've got a weak grasp going on as well, or your hand feels weak at least. It's hard to tell based on what you wrote. But trigger points are a possibility also. Um, trigger points in the scalenes, even in pectoralis minor or rotator cuff muscles, um, can send tingling-like sensations down into the fingers. And um, the rotator cuff trigger points in particular can generally make the shoulder and arm feel weak. So I would take a look at that. If you want a good resource for that, go to triggerpoints.net and then uh, look up some of the muscles. Look at, I'll give you the list real quick. Uh, look scalenes, pectoralis minor, look at uh, infraspinatus and subscapularis as other possibilities that will refer into the arm. And give a little exploration on that site. You might find something else there too. Um, Anyway, all I can do is really give you food for thought. I can't, I can't fix your problem through, uh, through a video. Uh, anyway, anyone else, if you got a question, throw it my way. I'll see what I can do about answering it. Yoganatomy.com forward slash my question. And if you haven't gotten it yet, go ahead and grab a copy of my book. Lots of good food for thought. Help, you, help give you ways to think about your anatomy, maybe uh, in a sort of like bigger, larger perspective. So maybe you come up with your own answers. All right. Take care, everybody. See you next time.